Hello, darlings. Hello, my cherished ducklings. How are you tonight? I'm wearing my jammies. So I'm all happy and comfy and cozy. And um, happy year of the tiger. It's Chinese New Year's, Chinese New Year yesterday. She was born in the year of the tiger. It's enough to give anyone pause. She's smoother than satin, a cat of Manhattan, a girl with retractable claws. Her eyes shine with jungle beast fever. She moves with a dangerous grace. And many a stranger who's blind to the danger has vanished with hardly a trace. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in a flame of champagne and moonlight. Tiger, tiger, can't you see? Stay away from that boy. Cause he's lost in this jungle with me. One more verse. So you think that the tiger's a kitten who has grown to an interesting size. Although she may purr when you're licking her fur, the tiger's in back of her eyes. Anyway, hi, that's from Year of the Tiger which um, I wrote, <laughs> so don't steal it or I'll sue you. But um, so yeah, tiger years are always exciting. Um, if you happen to be born in the year of the tiger, like I was, you're probably a little headstrong, um, a little dangerous, fun to be around. <laughs> and, and like all the prestige of leadership, but none of the responsibility. Um, I've been threatening to do an entire show about uh, Chinese years, like year of the ox. So if you're born in the year of the ox, it's a little like being Capricorn. You are ambitious, you're trustworthy, um, you're, you probably don't have horns, um, but very much like being a Capricorn. If you're born in the year of the rabbit or the cat, same thing. Um, you're famous for the things that rabbits and cats are famous for. Being a little aloof. Um, how can I put this? Liking to make more rabbits. <laughs> is, that, is that a subtle enough way of saying you have a high libido? Um, <clears throat> Um, let's see. And if you're born in the year of the dragon, you like, you just, usually people born in the year of the dragon have, uh, they're very good looking, but they have sort of almost a larger than life quality about them. Like almost mask like faces in a very cool way, but they like being at the head of the parade. Like when you see a Chinese new year parade, it's always led by the dragon, setting, surrounded by fireworks and, and being regal and dramatic. That's very dragon-like. So next show we'll do a few more. But my name is Perry Lyons. I'm the New York celebrity psychic. <laughs> and before we start, I saw we have, is it Katerina in, in New York? Maria, I'm sorry, dear. Maria. Hi, Hi Maria. <laughs> um, Hi! What a great name. Do you mind hanging out for two minutes while I just do the um, the tarot weather for the week? Oh no, that's fine. I'm enjoying listening to you. Oh, cool. Oh, that's so nice. We'll back at you. Do you know what Chinese okay. year you were born in? Oh. Not a clue. It's okay. I won't. I won't make you tell me the year. I don't do that to people. But um, all right. So the. Tarot weather for the week um, is, it doesn't matter what sign you are, it doesn't matter what Chinese year you are, if you happen to be listening or watching, the three cards I'm drawing are for the beginning of the week, the middle of the week, and the end of the week, and 
they if you're if you happen to be listening or watching they apply to you that's just how it works so grab some ginger ale mm. Mm. okay let's see what does the weather forecast for this week oh that's interesting um this starts off it's a wonderful deck it's an animal guide deck by um what's her name to let Baron read and the parrot. It doesn't mean that you're going to repeat <laughs> everything somebody says to you. Remember doing that when you were five? <laughs> um, to drive your like siblings crazy. Um, but that's not what the parrot card, what the parrot card means is at the beginning of the week, your words, Words are always powerful, but your words this week are especially powerful. So uh, think a little before you say anything, which is a trick I've never mastered, but if you can figure it out, good, good on you. Um, but it just means just think before you speak uh, for both, if, even if it's a good thing. Just take a minute and say, is this exactly what I want to say, exactly the way, the way I want to say it? Okay, we so much fun. I love doing that. Okay, what's the next card? Oh, the next card is the Queen of Wands. So around midweek, um, Queen of Wands means either that if you're female or identify as female, that you're going to be a little more outgoing and very much in your power as a as a queenly leader. It's a, as you, as you can see, she's got a black cat curled up at her feet, which is her intuition. She's very regal and wands represent fire. So she's very passionate. So midweek, you might find yourself really living this particular archetype, um, which means that you might find yourself very passionate in defense of a cause, in defense of a person, or you might find yourself being your most outgoing, gregarious people, person, self. It also means that you might have a fire sign woman play a significant role in your life midweek. This is a Taurus, excuse me, Taurus, what am I talking about? Um, Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries woman. I don't think it's going to be a conflict. I think it's just going to be somebody you're going to be spending time with and enjoying, maybe in a mentor kind of a way. We sorry about the nails, kids. Just not a nails person. Um, and the next card is the sun, which means towards the end of the week. Oh, we love this card. This card, when I get it, always means that you're experiencing kind of a step up in your ability to receive happiness. Uh, it means you might be spending time with children you love as opposed to children you dislike which is you know um it, some people might be getting news of a, a little one on the way but mostly what it means is discovering a new form of happiness whenever i get this card for myself or for clients um it always turns out true that Something happens in their life that's unexpected and that brings them to a level of happiness they've never experienced before in a good way. So, we that was fun. So, thank you, Maria. You still there? I sure am. Cool. Have you seen the new West Side story? No, I haven't. I've heard it's very good, but I haven't seen it. It's supposed to be wonderful. It's all I can do not to sing Maria, but I'm not going to. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> although I think I just did. It's great having a song with your name in the title. That's really nice. Um, so well, there's another to... one, How Do You Solve a Problem Like Maria. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I went to a, a, a theater high school where, in fact, uh -huh. They didn't teach us how to solve problems like calculus or algebra. They did, in fact, 
teach us how to solve problems like Maria. But since you're not a problem, <laughs> that doesn't apply. <laughs> but anyway, I like to connect to people through their birthdays. You don't have to tell me the year, but if you tell me what your birthday okay. is. Ready? All right. It's July 15th. Oh, what a good day. So you're a cancer. I love cancers. Well, I'm right. a Pisces. So we understand you guys. And it feels like, um, I might be wrong, but it feels like you've got a bunch of questions, but um, this is something about a transition you're going through right now. Um, it might be something to do with a job switch or a move. Is that correct? Uh, well, actually, I'm, I'm retired. Oh. Um, we are transitioning a new puppy into our family. Oh, great. What kind of puppy? It's called a Mastweiler. It is a cross between a Rottweiler and a Mastiff. Wow. So big and gentle, but um, a good guard dog, but very sweet. Yes. Ma Mastiffs are so sweet tempered. But um, yes. <laughs> probably because they're so huge that, that they don't have to be mean. Um, oh, that's great. What did you name your puppy? Rock. Oh, good name. Awesome. He kind of had that name when we got him, so we just kept it. Probably a good idea. Do you call him Dwayne Johnson for short? <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> so how can I how can I help you, Mo? You don't sound old enough to be retired. I have to tell you, you've got very young voice and spirit. Oh. Oh well, very thank nice. you. I I, I kind of pride myself in having. I don't know. I, I, I'm 65. I don't feel 65 most times. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but I did yeah, the, lose my yeah. mother about three years ago, and I would love oh. to connect with her. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, can you tell me her first name? Georgine. Oh, what a great name. <laughs> um. May I ask, how many living siblings do you have? Just one. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have two? Um, not in my lifetime, actually. My mother had a miscarriage between my brother and I. That's what I'm getting. Um, sorry, yeah. I'm sorry to bring that up, but... um. Oh, she's, she's That's raring okay. to go. <laughs> so hold on one second. <laughs> oh, I love her. She's a, fi what an interesting woman. Cause she's a firecracker, but she's also very, very grounded and very practical. Um, uh huh. Did she have auburn hair or did she tint her hair auburn at, at some point? It was, um, a darker brown. She did have some red highlights. Red highlights is what I'm. Yeah, not not redhead, just auburn in there somewhere. Um, and very yeah. beautiful eyes. Um, yes. Funny, I I can't. They're they're large and they're sort of almond shaped. Um, I can't tell if they're hazel or blue gray. I'm sorry about that, but um. Uh, they were a, a green hazel. Yeah. Not brown, but hazel, hazel, green, gray, depending on the weather and her mood. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of which she had many. Um, oh, boy, does she love you. She's around you all the time. Um, she's also around... Oh. Yeah, good. Oh, I, I, I do... I do... Um... I, I've been called an empath. I, I don't see spirits, but I smell them. <laughs> oh, that makes total sense. Um, do you smell a perfume kind of like joy with rose, jasmine, um, an identifiably sweet flower? 
sometimes. Um, my mother was a great baker, and oftentimes I will smell um, like cakes oh. or cookies. Oh, that's great. Oh. Yeah. Ogre. Oh, she was a great baker. She loves celebrations, too. Very. It's interesting. She's very multifaceted. Um, she's a little worried about your brother right now. I mean, he's not in terrible trouble or anything, but he's he's pulling focus. Do you have two kids? Um, actually, I have three. Okay. Okay, I'm a little off on the kids tonight, but um, one of them looks very much like her, specifically in the nose shape, uh, the set of the eyes, and a, another one has. Uh. A a personnel. It's funny because they're not the same. So one looks resembles her physically and another has a similar personality to her. Is that correct? Um yeah, so yes. I, I would say so. Yeah. 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 Um uh, it's funny, the I don't think the third kid gives you any trouble at all. <laughs> your, um, the third kid is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I do, like I said, out of the three, I do have one that's um, very independent and self-contained. Oh, that might the be... The other two are yeah. a little more needy. Uh, that That's why he, she, or they is probably not showing up. Sometimes with people like that, if I try and, if I try and go in there, they're like, nah, you know, talk to the psychic hand. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. I, don't don't get in my business. So, is yeah. she is is she a girl or female identified? Yes. Boy, your kid's smart. Holy mackerel! Um, <laughs> wow. The other two are just more emotional. I mean, she's very emotional, but she's also very she's reserved in her. I mean, she's yes. not reserved in her personality, but she's reserved about what she chooses to share with other people. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it feels like you have two girls and a boy. I'm not putting money in that yes. the way I'm going with siblings tonight. Okay. Um, the boy seems... <laughs> yeah, well, um, well, you're a perfectionist. You know how this feels. Um, the boy seems sort of more on the sciencey side to me, although I think he loves music. Um, God, he'd make um, a great he's doctor. He's very hands-on. He's very, yeah, he's he's practical, and although I, he's chosen his field already, he he would make a terrific like doctor or dentist or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, he's very compassionate, and. The yes. other girl is very creative and probably, probably not, I mean, probably dramatic, but not in a, does the word quiet, the words quietly dramatic mean anything to you? Um, not for that one. <laughs> uh, really? She's just dramatic, dramatic? <laughs> okay. Well, it, she, she kind of wears her heart on her sleeve. Um, that, yes. Very sensitive. Very sensitive. Uh, the words I, I was given were she's a big ball of mush, but she's nobody's fool. But she's uh, a. That, that, that's good. Yeah, that works. Um, that's very good. I, I sort of didn't want to start out with big ball of mush because it sounded a little, you know, but that's what I was given. <laughs> so, um, and she's very creative. Sometimes it's a little hard for her yes. because she's good at a lot of different things. And it's not like she's mm -hmm. ADHD, but she just, there's so many things that she likes doing that it can be hard for right. her to choose. Yeah. Um, right. The independent one, it feels like she knew from the moment she was born what she wanted to do, how she was going to do, do it and who she was going to do it with. End of story. Thank you. Next. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but you've done you've done a really good job with them. I mean, they're all healthy and happy, and um, and they're all secure. And I mean, as much as any human being can be. But they're right. You reflected them back to them as who they are. You didn't impose who you wanted them to be onto them, um, which is very That's nice. Correct. Right? I, yeah. yeah. It feels like I, that was. I a had a very critical parent. And I, I tend to, I, I, I don't want, I never wanted to do that to my children. You know, I've always wanted them to be individuals. What's sad is that that, that critical parent thought, I'm guessing it was your mother, but I'm, I'm not sure. Well, my, um, what? my mother had higher goals for me than I think I achieved. But my father, who is also deceased, was much more critical. Yeah, I think I I had a father who uh, loved me to pieces, as yours did too. But he was from a culture that expressed love through criticism. So that was, and that's confusing for a child because. Yes. Um, and I know your father loved you. Um. Oh, there was no doubt. But oh, yeah, but I, I think he just yeah. had difficulty showing how he felt. And yeah, and part of that was the culture he was from. Um, mm -hmm. Part of it was his age. I mean, <laughs> my dad was like a New York City Jewish guy, and, and uh, that was, I mean, his his way of expressing. Approval. If I came home with an A, was like you're so smart. This should be an A plus. But uh, looking yeah. back, yeah. So yeah. that's what I get from your dad. Um, your mother was actually incredibly proud of you. But again, she she came from a culture where because I mean I can't see you physically. Um, sadly, uh -huh. this isn't a two way mirror. But I can tell you that you're very attractive. <laughs> and I think she didn't, because you're very attractive and you're very charismatic, um, she didn't want you to get a swelled head. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think yeah. you actually met her standards and exceeded them. But I think she just, you know, it's funny. That generation is so different from our generation. Um, but you've, by anybody's standards, you've achieved a lot. And also, you have a really I, good character. What? Oh, well, thank you. I, 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 I pretty much achieved everything I set out to do. Yeah. <laughs> That's who you are. <laughs> So let's see. Um, let me see if I can get your mom back. It's funny, your mom's being a little, she's being a little shy. Um, and she's, I'll, I'll admit, she's a little tough for me to get, which doesn't often happen. Hold on. Okay. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here because. She says that one of, she shows you signs of her being around. Um, one of them is a uh -huh. specific type of flower. Did she garden or I'm not sure why I'm getting flowers? Yeah, she loved but, it. Yeah. She, okay. She, yeah, she was a great gardener. Yeah. Um, yeah, she really was. I mean, she's like a master gardener. Um, yeah. Again, Roses are, I mean, it seems so cliche, roses, and there's a particular type of spring flower that she loved, like one of the earliest, like crocuses, or one of the very early spring flowers that she really loved. Um, it was probably daffodils. Daffodils was what came to mind, and I was too chicken to say it, so, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, daffodils, crocuses and daffodils. And I think, right. And it's interesting. She didn't have an easy life. 
her early life was not easy. No. Um, no. In fact, you could call it traumatic, um, which uh -huh. is interesting because she didn't show that. I mean, she was very gracious. And she's, I'm not sure why your brother is pulling the focus right now. If there's something going, oh, I'm sorry. You know, I've spent the whole show on you. Do you mind doing another two minutes? And for everybody no, who's waiting, not. great. Um, for everybody <laughs> who's waiting, I apologize. Just, you know, sometimes my guides want to focus on one person. So I'm on Moonstruck TV and A1R Radio. We're the biggest psychic network in the world and on 9 p.m est and you can find us everywhere so please tune in next week guys and i'm going to go back to marie maria sorry um <laughs> i just met a girl named maria um and i really <laughs> like her and so does oh, her oh, mom please. doreen um <laughs> <laughs> what, what's interesting is that before I started doing this work, I, I never I never believed in an afterlife. It's just then people who'd passed start showing up and I'm well bred. I had to talk to them. You have to be polite. Mm -hmm. Um there's some there is some new venture or new side hustle or something that you're contemplating. Um and now she's just being flat out encouraging because she's her true self okay. now. Did she, she also dresses really well. Um, wow. But there's... She was always I, a bit of a clothes horse. She was always meticulously yes. put together. Meticulously. I mean, even, yes. even a hat and gloves. Um, um, that's a sign that she's especially around you. There's also a, a light in your house that kind of goes on and off of its own volition. That's her saying hi. 